The movie begins shortly after the First World War, during which Serbia suffered a tragic loss and lost more than two-thirds of its male population. Due to this, there are numerous small towns with few or no men at all. We are then introduced to two sisters, Onyenka and Boginja, living in a lovely pond on top of a mountain. This pond is located next to a cemetery and is rumored to have formed from the tears shed by their widowed great-grandmother. She cried for seven days and seven nights after her husband didn't return from the war. Eventually, the woman became so well known for her anguish that she became the best funeral wailer in the small town. Slowly, this ended up becoming a family business, which means the sisters are now whalers as well. It's now forbidden to swim in the cursed pond, but Boginja doesn't believe in the curse and decides to bathe in it. It turns out that in this village, a boy's considered ready for war if he's as tall as a rifle. To do this, the number of men is gradually decreasing, and the sisters' family business is also going downhill. Only two men have ever returned to the village, and both met untimely ends. The first man was struck by a gravestone, yet it remains unclear whether it was a result of accidental circumstances or if his wife killed him for cheating. The second man realized he couldn't defend an entire town of ladies by himself, so he planted a minefield in the vineyard. He never wrote down the location of the mines, relying on his photographic memory, but he eventually died due to the same minefield. Now, the villagers are forced to draw lots to determine who will brave the mine-infested vineyard to gather grapes, an endeavor that often ends in tragedy for most of them. One day, a girl named Nada approaches the two sisters and offers to hire their crying services in advance because she's drawn the short straw and will be going to the vineyard next. The girls agree and begin their sample performance right away. Ognienka has difficulty sobbing, so she begins reliving painful events to make herself cry. She reflects on her friend Sanya's ill-fated marriage, where her husband was whisked away to war before they could even share a kiss, leaving Ognienka speechless ever since. When she still can't shed tears, Boginja taunts her by reminding her that she'll be 22 years old soon, without a spouse or children, and will have to grow old alone. Ognienka says the same thing to her sister, and within seconds, they both start crying, which satisfies Neda enough to hire them. Feeling sorry for the sisters, Nada reveals that she kissed an elderly man once who was the only remaining male in the village and urges the girls to visit him. While the sisters feel disgusted by this, Nada says that she'd rather have her first experience with an old man than never to have it at all. Following this, the three women enter a tavern, which is packed with female locals drowning their sorrows. Since Nada knows she doesn't have much time left, she requests that the bartender forego the cheap cocktails and instead pour spider brandy to all the women out there. The drink is so powerful that the women at the tavern start seeing ghosts of the men they've lost in the war. However, not even ghosts dance with the two sisters, and they soon pass out, although not before seeing visions of two males in front of them. The following day, the women of the village accompany Nada to the minefield. Before entering, Nada informs the two sisters that she's arranged for them to visit the old man for some fun. Nada then enters the minefield and is immediately killed by the explosion. In the following scene, the intrigued sisters arrive to see the old man, but neither one is eager to go in first to begin the process. Boginja eventually pushes Ognenka into the old man's bed. However, when the old man appears near her face, she freaks out and screams unintentionally, causing him to have a deadly heart attack and die on the spot. Due to this, the rest of the villagers are furious that the sisters killed the last man in the village. Therefore, they tie the sisters to a pyre and prepare to burn them to death. Desperate to get out, Boginja promises everyone that she can bring back a better guy to compensate for the old man, so the villagers agree to give them a chance. The women then bring a witch who curses the two sisters, saying that if they don't keep their promise, their great-grandmother's soul will rot in this world forever. Just then, a swarm of bats appears and flees as if to warn of the curse's impending arrival. Following this, the sisters begin on a quest to find a man but their search proves to be far more difficult than they anticipated. The first one they meet belongs to another female-only village, and the sisters are scared away as soon as the women see them getting closer to their guy. The second man they encounter is actually a woman impersonating a man in order to join the army so that men can stay behind and help repopulate. Eventually, the girls arrive at the city, and they're surprised to find the men from their visions. There, Ognienka is fascinated by Dragolyub, a circus artist known as the Man of Steel and the two soar into the sky. Boginja, on the other hand, comes across a charming singer named Arsa, whose soft voice captivates the hearts of all the city's girls. Moments later, Dragolyub and Ognienka fall into a neighboring lake, and Dragolyub nearly drowns, 
but Ognieka takes him out and gives him mouth to mouth. Therefore, Dragolyub is impressed with her and hires her as his assistant. In another scene, Arsa is surrounded by too many women, so he tosses a flower and claims that whomever catches it will be his queen. So the women fight crazily for the flower, with Boginia being the winner. However, Arsa returns to his car to flee, but not before picking up his friend Dragolyub, who brings Ognienka with him. The chaotic fangirls try to stop the car from departing, and Boginia jumps against the door to show that she has the flower. Ognienka then states that she's her sister, so Arsa has no choice but to let Boginia in the car as well. Following this, the four of them travel together, and after a while, the sisters urge them to pull over to the side of the road so that they can have some alone time. After that, the females sneak behind a bush and change their clothes. Ognienka tells her sister that she doesn't want to return to the village, since Dragolyub will take her all over the world. Later, Arsa becomes attracted to Boginya when he sees her in a semi-naked state and they begin making out. Meanwhile, Ognienka and Dragolyub are in the car and she tells them she no longer wants to return to her village. Dragolyub, on the other hand, is desperate to see a town full of women hungry for a man like him. The four then resume driving, but a flock of bats causes them to collide with a funeral procession. These bats are similar to those that appeared after the sisters were cursed, so the magic must be leading them somewhere. Immediately, Boginia pulls Arsa into the funeral car and they drive away. Ognienka doesn't seem to mind and drives away with her own man as well. Later, Dragolyub informs her about the city's wonders and modernism, including towers so tall that he tried to jump from them. Ognienka is impressed by the description of the city and wishes she could see it as well. Meanwhile, Boginia and Arsa are driving on dark and stormy roads. Along the way, the door of the stolen funeral car opens and the coffin it's carrying falls to the ground. In the next scene, Ognienka and Dragolyub arrive in the village and the women initially think he's another delusion. But after they realize he's real, they're all over him, except for the skeptical Sanya. While Dragolyub enjoys the attention, Ognienka can't help but feel jealous. Later, they use Dragolyub's circus abilities to pick grapes securely. He then rides a rope-powered bicycle across the minefield while Ognienka stays attached to him, effortlessly catching the fruit without touching the ground. That evening, the women celebrate in the tavern with Dragolyub, who starts drinking heavily. Meanwhile, the village witch lifts the curse on the sisters, allowing their great-grandmother's soul to rest. Ognienka, on the other hand, begins to feel lonely and irritated because she started to fall in love with Dragolyub and doesn't want to share him with others. However, her thoughts are interrupted by the arrival of Boginya, who's returned to help her. Afterward, when the sisters arrive at the tavern, they see Dragolyub having fun and Sanya heading closer to kiss him. So, a jealous Ognienka kicks him in the groin and declares to everyone that he belongs to her and that they're taking him back to the city. However, the women simply laugh at Ognienka and continue their celebrations. With this, Ognienka kisses Dragolyub and declares her love for him. And just then, Sanya speaks after a long time, after witnessing the kiss she's been craving since her wedding day was destroyed. Dragolyub explains that he can only kiss Ognienka, but Sanya ignores him and kisses him anyways. Just then, Arsa enters the pub despite Boginya's instructions and drinks some of the spider brandy, oblivious that the villagers are staring at him lustfully. He begins an exquisite dance on the dining table, and the women fight over him while screaming, howling, and jabbing at each other. Sometime later, another argument breaks out, this time between the two men, and while trying to show off his muscles, Dragolyub falls to the floor. The women tell the boys that the only way to determine who's the better man is by their bed skills. And when Dragolyub agrees, Ognienka throws a glass at his head. A while later, upset Ognienka walks to Arsa's bedroom and offers herself to him. However, realizing how terrified she is of this, he refuses to touch her and sends her away. After Ognienka leaves, another woman arrives to have her turn. But Arsa refuses her as well and exits the room. The next morning, Ognienka tells her sister that Arsa did not touch her and that he was respectful, but she's still disturbed by Dragolyub's behavior. Meanwhile, Dragolyub awakens to see Sanya lurking over him, trying to get close to him. She confronts him about his aggressive behavior and reminds him that letting go of his ego is okay. However, Sanya knows deep down that Dragolyub is committed to another lady. So after some thought, she kisses him one final time and sends him off. Afterward, the two sisters get into the car, determined to leave their village behind for good. Around the same time, Arsa comes out of his room, only to find a long queue of women outside, waiting for their time with him. Meanwhile, Dragolyub tries to join the sisters, but they simply slam him with the vehicle for being a pervert. Arsa then finds himself in the deadly mine yard by accident. The women inform him that the vineyard is infested with mines. 
He's now frightened to move for fear of setting off one of the bombs. Seeing the man in trouble, Boginia gets out of the car and decides to die with him. And before she leaves, she kisses her sister farewell and advises her to live her life to the fullest. After that, Boginia and Arsa kiss and dance, while the rest of the villagers watch them in astonishment. Moments later, the mines burst around them, and the couple is eventually killed by the fire. Later, while driving out of the village, Ognienka recalls her sister bathing at the cursed pond. She believes that this is what caused her sister's death. With this, Ognienka begins to envision the future in the city that Dragoljub has told her about. In the final scene, Ognienka arrives in town and discovers Dragoljub on top of the tower he previously told her about. She then joins the rest of the crowd on the roof to see if he can pull the jump off. 